Good morning, folks. Good morning and welcome to FYI. Wherever you guys are joining us from this morning, we are happy that you are here with us. Share the live, smash that emoji button. Last to share with you, good folks. We are simply delighted that you guys are here. How has the day started? Good folks, Yolanda Thomas, first out there. How are you doing, Yolanda? Good to have you at this end. Great to have you. Saw so, um, some of your comments uh, early this morning. Thanks for sending the message, the messages. You know, it's good to start the morning with how are you doing? <laughs> how are you? Have a great day. Yolanda Thomas, we see you there. And Vashti, Magnot, and Rupert, Claire, and Glenford, Irwin, and all the other folks joining us across social media this morning. Guys, we're happy. We're happy that you folks are here with us. Uh, share the live. Uh, smash that emoji button as well. Uh, good folks. Simply delighted that, that you guys are here. What's the weather like where you guys are joining us from? Uh, do let us know. What is the weather like? We want to know. We want to know. What's the weather like? Uh, great to see each and every one of you guys. We are fired up at this end, and we are ready to go. And we hope that you guys are as well. Welcome, welcome, welcome to FYI, good folks. Welcome. Welcome. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm like, a, like a little too bright this morning. I feel like a little too bright. Bear with us, guys. We're getting started this morning. How's the weather where you guys are? Do let us know, good folks. Do let us know how was the weather? How was the how was the weather? <laughs> We're getting set to start. And as we said, good to have good to have each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. Wherever you're joining us from. All right, all right, all right. All right. Great to have you folks on the live. Peace, peace and power. Folks, we are set here. Giving you guys a chance to, to share the live. To smash that emoji button, folks. As we get set. And we hope that you guys are great this morning. We hope that you guys are well. Peace and power. Peace and power. All right, so good to see you folks. We see we got a lot of the usual suspects. Yvonne Ramasa, Roxanne Aaron, good to have you. Rena Cummins, Peters Hall, Providence, and all those areas there. Good to see you, Rowena. Rena always on the ball. I, I love that about Rowena. Rowena always set <laughs> and ready for them boys. Always set. And ready for them, boys. You know, and that's a good quality to have as a political activist and politician. It's a good quality. Glenford, we see you as well, guys. We're making sure we dot we eyes and we cross all of our T's on this side. Good to see you, Erwin Dawn and Michael. How are you folks doing? Guys, we're simply delighted to have you all here. Simply delighted. <laughs> Pace and power, good folks. Pace, pace, pace and power. How are you all doing, the man? How are you all doing? As we said, we're dotting with I's and crossing our T's. John Jones, we see you there, John. Good to see you, John Jones. Uh, Dexter, we see you there as well. Uh, good to have you, Dexter. Who else do we have this morning? I see Doc Garcia is here with us. Uh, good to have you, Doc. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, Ingrid Ambrose, good to see you, Ingrid, and all the other folks joining us this morning. Uh, good to see you guys there as well. Who else do we have with us? We see Melanda Morris, Futkao is here, Gilali Kok is here, all the usual suspects. Guys, we are 
we are so happy that you all are here with us. We're uh, fired up at this end and we are ready to go and we are simply happy that you guys are as well. Thanks for joining us this morning, wherever you are joining us from around the world. It's a pleasure being here with you folks. Beatrice Selby, we see you there and uh, Natasha Glenn, Dolly Anderson, Edward Brooms and all the other folks. Uh, good to have you guys on this morning. Uh, look some of the stuff we are covering today as we uh, head into as we head into the morning paper, some of the things that we are covering. And as we said, uh, good to have all of you guys on the live with us today. Here are some of the issues that we are looking at this morning. Uh, first up in the morning papers, guys, I don't know about you, but we got a lot, a lot, a lot happening at our end. And good to have, good to have all of you guys join us. We're just ensuring we dot the I's and we, we cross the T's. And again, it's so good to see uh, each and every one of you. Guys, how y'all and doing? How y'all and doing? How y'all and doing? Do let us know, folks. How y'all and doing? <laughs> how how y'all and doing? We got the morning papers set, folks. It's just some of y'all missing, you know. We we got the morning papers set. It's only some of you. You good folks missing. Don't stay, don't stay out too long. Don't stay out too long at all. Uh, good to see you. Um, is it is it uh, Jane Jane Mills? Jane Mills and uh, Gwyneth, good to see you. Uh, Jane and um, good to see you. <laughs> Margaret Morris, watching some comments from Rena as well. Uh, Beatrice Selby and all of the other folks joining us. Carol Rollins and Margaret Nelson, good to see you there, and Lynette Zephyr, right? Um, guys, do you hear me clearly? Lynette says she's not hearing my voice. Is that so? Uh, good to see you, Lynette and Leon. Uh, I see we got Gwyneth and Loretta Argyle is here as well. Guys, we're happy and nothing short of delighted to have all of you folks at this end. Again, we are very happy that all of you are with us. And we are set at our end and ready to go. A lot to cover in the morning papers, folks. And let's let's head at some of those headlines that we that we want to look at. Uh, first up, first up, they're telling us um, in the morning papers. Um, you know, this 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 one is is something else. You know, man allegedly hit secret camera in the bathroom of Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Yep, he took out um, videos and photographs of about. 200 persons, you know, including about 80 or so minors. You, got, you, got, you know, they got all kinds of strange people in this world. Debbie and Annette, open parts, all kinds of strange uh, people in this world. I mean, like, what, um, I don't know how to put this, but like, what, what is in that for you? You know, what would be the fascination there? I, I could imagine, okay, now, all kind of quirky people. So they're telling us, uh, uh, you know, in this washroom of um, the cruise line, uh, Royal Caribbean, right? Fella put cameras in the washroom. I mean, some people got all kinds of mental, mental struggles, you know? All kinds of mental struggles that they're fighting. All kinds of mental struggles. And, you know, this definitely got to be one. What's the fascination there, you know? What's the fascination there? So that's one of the headlines that we're looking at in the morning papers, folks. And here's another one, another one of those headlines that we're checking out in the morning papers. And this one says, um, what does it say here? Uh, the heat is on, you know, whether due to global warming or otherwise. And we've been telling you guys of the uh, heat wave they got happening right now in Jamaica. This is like... Barbados as well, and I'm certain we're feeling some of the effects at our end. You all realize how, you know, at least in the national capital city where we are, you know, Georgetown here in Guyana, hot, 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 hot. And I'm certain it's hotter in some other places. So this is one of the things that the, um, the people who make a study of the weather telling us that the Caribbean uh, heat season warms up and it's going to be hotter than usual. I saw an advisory um, telling people how to stay hydrated quite recently, Sukchan and all the other folks. 
Do let us know if you're hearing us clearly. So the heat is on. Good to have you. Wanda Hudson. Wanda says Texas is in the house. And Donna and all the, the other folks joining us. We're happy to have Texas in the house. Delighted to have Texas in the house. Out front part says morning neighbor. Yeah, yeah. Good morning. But you all stay cool, please. Please out there. Stay cool. The folks are telling us um, chances are it's going to be warmer than usual. You know? Yeah. Is summer ready? Is it? Is it? Is it? Not a headline we're following, folks. Three years jail. The man who stole from church. Nothing is sacred anymore. Not in the 592 where we are. Nothing, nothing, nothing is sacred anymore. You know, absolutely nothing is sacred anymore. And, you know, fella uh, found himself on the wrong side of the law. You, you, you can't do the time, don't do the crime. As simple as that. You know, you can do the time, don't do the crime. It is as perfectly simple as that. What else you want? You know? What else you want? So they're telling us this fella uh, clearly ain't got too much um, clearly ain't got too much uh, inhibitions. You know? He find himself telling a church. That's where he found himself. Good folks in a church and he stole some of those items there in the church. Now, He's paying a price for it. Yep, he is paying a price for that. And they're telling us Sean Passad called Sean Yap, 47 of Pike Street. You know, no stranger to the law, having served the four year prison sentence before for brick and larceny. Right? He's now going to be serving three years. He's now going to be serving three years after he broke into uh, the New Testament Church of God in Monrepo and stole a number of items, including uh, two amplifiers. Sean Passat, yep. You know, folks, again, people got all, all kinds of challenges. All kinds of challenges they're working through. Simply put, can't do the time, don't do the crime. So Sean, the report telling us, served four years before, now he's off to serve another three years. Yeah. That's what we're saying. People got all, all kinds of challenges. There's that one. There's that one. We come to the top of the challenge we all have with oil and gas. That's, that's a major, major challenge. The last item we're looking at, last headline, uh, making the morning papers. This is, this, is, this is one of them. They're telling us that um, three remanded for murder at the, natural, the, the National Psychiatric Hospital. A fella had just checked in there. You know, the day before. And then we learned that he was beaten to death. Yep, yep. You know, that's the kind of country we live in, sadly. And unfortunately, that's the kind of country... We live in. They're telling us that three persons have allegedly been, uh, who have been suffering from mental illness, have been remanded for the recent murder which occurred at the, Nat the National Psychiatric Hospital at Fort Kanji. Right? Remanded is Curtis Robinson, um, you got Kellon Cadogan, and Mark Sampson. You know, they're accused of killing 32 year old Danish Passad of Bath Settlement. who less than 24 hours before he was killed, became an inmate of that institution there. You know, and, you know, questions can be asked. A lot of questions can be asked whether, you know, they are responsible or just the people who supervise them are responsible as well. Where were they? You know, so we'd love to see, we'd love to see a report on this. Love to see a report on that, you know, as we move forward. We'd love to see a report on that. Folks, we're going to turn our attention to some of the things we're tracking um, internationally, uh, some of the things we are tracking uh, regionally, and some of the things we're tracking at home as well. You know, that's where we're picking up our, the other aspect of our discussion 
from this morning. Um, some of those things that we're tracking on those fronts. On those fronts, folks. Internationally, how things by your, you know, how things are going on by your, how things at your end. Uh, Marlon King and Gwyneth Anderson and Lynn Fernandes. Yeah, Lynn said that's very sad. Indeed, it's very sad. You know, less than 24 hours before Paul Passat checked into that uh, mental health facility there in Kanji, he's going to lose his life. You know, like, what is his state of affairs there ordinarily? That'll be interesting to know, you know. What is the state of affairs at that institution? You know, on a normal basis. On a normal basis. That'll be very interesting to find out. Very interesting to find out. Very, very interesting to find out. Folks, let's have a go at it. Some of the stuff we're tracking at our end. And we trust it all is well at your end, guys. Look at this one. You know, the avian flu making its wrong. We told you the um, scientists and people at the World Health Organization who study these uh, viruses, these disease, I told us, look, we've been through everything in the last two to three years. Isn't that so, June? And it comes. It's like we've been through everything. Precious Queen and Anne Singh. Now we got the avian, the avian flu. To deal with, yeah. Yep. Just one more thing that we need, you know? Just one more thing. One more thing. So we, we're struggling with this one now. And this is what they're, this is what they're telling us. Um, you know, they've been noticing um, over the past two years, uh, the avian flu has been making its way um, U.S., Europe, and elsewhere, uh, sickening millions of farm birds, which either die from infection or are killed by farmers who are seeking to stem the spread of the avian flu, a very, very deadly virus. So millions of birds, they have been recording worldwide, especially they tell us in the U.S. and Europe, you know, being stricken by, by, by this virus, the avian flu. You know, and it's when some of these virus make the leap from, you know, animals to human beings, then is the, the real challenge starts. You know, the real challenge starts. They're telling us in addition to that, the poultry outbreak has become an animal welfare crisis. And it has been one of the reasons why um, eggs, they sell us, have become so expensive because there are simply fewer hens, you know, to lay them if, you, if you're buying imported eggs. Uh, the, uh, they said the virus is causing another major crisis that is drawn less for attention, the death of wild birds. You know, just some of the challenges we've had in the last few years. You know, what's coming next. Put it simply. You just don't know what is coming next. And then you got the PPP flu to deal with as well. You know, China leading the way. China leading the way. Debbie Collins and Pam Hall, perhaps not the way that you think. You all know this GPT chat. We had a Professor um, Shamir Ali with the back channels. They had a little bit about GPT chat and how um, artificial intelligence is now front and center. Well, a man apparently used this GPT chat site, you know, and he was spewing fake news in China. Well, they arrested him and have dealt with him summarily. And it is now the first instance of where artificial intelligence, people are being prosecuted over the um, use or um, abuse of artificial intelligence. And uh, that's, that, that went down in China. That's one of the things we're following. Yep. Regionally, folks, this might be closer to where some of you are. How are the folks doing there in Barbados and in Antigua and in all of those other places? You all are joining us from in the region. This is some of what we're following. Annette Cummins and uh, Chevron and uh, all of the other guys joining us. This is some of what we're following, you know, in, um, in Chile, Peru. Again, when we talk about that uh, scarcity of water and the heat, the drought and everything else, yeah. They said some mi migrants are stranded in the Chilean desert. All right, this is Latin America. 
as Peru closes its border, why in these health crises, uh, people tend to get a little mean? Remember, when they put him out in the workplace over COVID-19, do you remember? Oh, that seems so far, that seems so long ago. Security was calling people, put him out of the workplace. Now you got Peru closing its borders. You know, the heat is on, the heat is on. They're telling us that migrants that are stranded in the Chilean desert, the Chilean desert there. Oh, Peru, ow, 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 ow. Jackie Smith, respect and manners, ow. That's one of the things we're following. A lot of, lot of problems. We told you guys last evening of the president of Trinidad, Christine Kangaloo, awarding senior counsel status to her brother and husband as part of, I think, 18 persons who were conferred with what they call in the legal fraternity silk. You know, it tells of your experience and um, seniority in the legal fraternity when you become a senior counsel. Right? Senior to your peers. Right? And now they're coming on the fire there. And this senior counsel, uh, one uh, Avery St. Allen, he says a poppy show. He said it's a poppy show and says that the president of Trinidad and Tobago, Christine Kangaloo, also have recused herself from that process, he said, he said it's unethical. Unethical for her to preside over a process where her husband and her brother can benefit. A lot of other persons are speaking out as well. A lot of other persons are speaking out as well. They said she should have recused herself. That's what you do, you know. You're supposed to do that. You know, you're part of a process and your family can benefit. You gotta recuse yourself. Like, oh, since Darren Lal did come in, give the family business contracts and so on. Unethical. Especially if you're striving for good governance. Right? Especially if you're striving for good governance. So again, the uh, president of Trinidad, who um, the, I think it comes from, the recommendations come from the prime minister to the president, and then the Silk or senior counsel status is conferred on lawyers who are befitting. Well, your husband and your brother went in the pact. And uh, folks like senior counsel um, Avery Sinanan saying, it should not have happened. That's what he's saying. It should not have happened. Not that they should not have gotten senior counsel if they are rightly qualified. But she should not have been the person who presided over the process. And your family. You know, there are some hypocrites. Ralph Gonzalez is one of them. Hypocrite. Hypocrite. Now Ralph went to the coronation. Pose up nice with the king. And then he come and say, oh, he wants St. Vincent um, be guided by the monarchy. Well, he should stay home and look after the divorce papers. Ralph really, really struggling and trying to get um, some traction as a senior politician in the region. But folks, one of the people, one of the news entities reporting on this matter, uh, Beatrice, uh, John Jones, one of, the one of the news entities reporting on this matter uh, said us uh, um, a small island, small island nation, the Caribbean. That's how they describe St. Vincent and the Grenadine. Its prime minister feels it's absurd. It's absurd. You know, they still have the monarchy. But he went, pose up nice, nice with the people. And then you go outside and you abuse them. It, you know, it's really hypocritical. Really hypocritical. Our front party should stay home and start the process of divorcing themselves from the monarchy if he feels so strongly about it. If he feels so strong about it, that's what he should have done. You see? But he stays, he only pose up. You know? 
pull it up. And then he go outside and he said, we want the monarch. <laughs> you know? How come Air Fund get a nice photograph, man? Samoa Williams, how come Air Fund and get a nice photograph? Neon Harding, Paul and Grieve, Joyce Carter. How come Air Fund and get a nice photo too? With King Charles. How come? That's why fun. How come Beatrice and Elizabeth Paul and Grieve says snakes? That's the right app description. Paul and says snakes. True and correct. True and correct, Paula. True and correct. Yep. How can you trust folks like that? How? How? The North remembers, Ralph. The North remembers. In the 592, Rosie Rose. In the 592, the North remembers. Don't come wrong with funny. The North remembers. Some of the stuff we're covering at home. Dolly Beatrice. Miss Austin and uh, Polly. How is Polly doing? Bishop Peter Jeffrey, we see you there, Peter. We see you there, Bishop. We see you there. Destiny and Destiny. Thanks for joining the live this morning. Some of the stuff we're covering in the 592. You know, by Chancellor of the University of Guyana, we alma mater. She said we've lost about a trillion US dollars in, you know, just talent. Graduates migrating, beating out. Priyan. Jack Leo, people don't run from good. People don't run from good. That's what the Vice Chancellor said. Well, now the people don't run. He said, we've lost a lot of talent, you know. Lots of human resource and capital. We train our students and then they beat out. Yeah. Yep. You tell me you're going for UG for four years. You know, you're going to struggle through and withstand all the vicissitudes of higher education, higher learning, you know, to come and get a 10-day work. That's the end result. You go through all of that, pay all the money out of pocket for lots of people. Come get 10 day work. So people keep going, people keep going. Post office, sorry, uh, passport office, lines long every day, embassy lines full every day. People fed up with them. You know, it's sad to be losing our people, but if people got to go make a better way, so be it. When the Hudson, people got to go make a better way. So be it. You know, them boys have been de have been detained. PPP strong man, demon, and others. We read that the commissioner of police, Clifton Hickens, says he got a zero policy now, zero tolerance policy for people who want to fight and fight policemen, beat upon policemen. He got a zero tolerance policy. Well, I know how he and them boys going to work out. It's a good policy to have. Right? But when you want me the shadow, I don't know how them policy going to work out. Because he want to be a shadow. For catfish. He want to be the shadow. So we don't know. Don't know how Glenn Ford, we just don't know. Destiny answers is the PP driving People out together. I tend to agree with Destiny. I'm certain a lot of you would agree with Destiny. Edward and Glenford and Dolly. Driving a lot of people out. And you all know they passed one of the young men through the coach yesterday morning. 12 charges and then they apprehended. The demon at the airport trying to get to Suriname. You know, justice got to be blind. When we can get there, Gwyneth? Out front parts, run the garden. When we can get there? When justice is blind. We got to get there nonetheless. Got to get there nonetheless. So this is one of the things we're following. You know, they were slapped. That's what the headline says. Folks, look this one. 
They're telling us that Gaisuko, you know, the second crop for the year, it might surpass target. It might, well, the targets have already been revised and are extremely low. At this point, if Gaisuko could produce a little two pound of sugar, it's a successful second quarter. At this point, because the targets have been revised, Amel Farrington and others, the targets have been revised so low. So low. <laughs> if they produce a two pound of sugar, it's a successful second quarter. You know, so I guess we got to brace ourselves, folks, to line up for sugar again this year. We got to brace ourselves. Maureen, last year we had to line up for sugar, rationing sugar. What's supposed to be the sugar capital of the world? How's Keldon going for me since the modernization? One of the things we're following. And look what this, these Jagabats are telling us. Folks, this, they're, they're studying. <laughs> studying. Judge Sandil Kisun's ruling out of the High Court on that insurance issue. Hmm? That's what they're telling us. They study in the issue. You know what I really mean? Jack, don't tell me what we do yet. That is what it really means. That Mr. Jack, you ain't tell me what, what the next what the next move is. When they say they're studying it, I'm telling you what it means. <laughs> That's what it really means. We didn't get the um, we didn't get approval yet. That's what they're really saying, folks. We haven't gotten approval just yet. Just yet. Y'all think them boys easy? They're not. <laughs> Don't run away feeling that them boys easy. Right? They are not by any stretch of the imagination. They're not easy. So again, this is what the EPA telling us. Right? This is what the EPA tell us. They're studying. What's there to study? I don't know. Right. They're studying like exam. They should have studied before and not do foolishness. That's what they should have done. That is precisely what they should have done. Y'all believe them? Marilyn Larmer says, keep the pressure up. We can do just that, Marilyn. We can do just that. And it comes Dolly and Glenford. We big EPA. We big. We big. And we got sense. This one, let me follow. We big EPA, we big, and we got sense. We got sense. Well, look, story now. Second withdrawal for 2023 from the Natural Resource Fund, the NRF, for the 1.6 billion. Right? I like how actually in a time for coming to the National Assembly to lay the papers. You ain't got time to come to lay the papers. You withdraw, though. Spend, spend, spend. How much is that coming in your pocket? Do you think? Billions upon billions upon billions. But doing what? How is it helping? Uh, you and I, Onika Brahma Party, how is it helping us? That's all we keep hearing. Billions for this. Billions for that. But how is it helping us? You know, we were there, you know, last weekend, two weekends ago in uh, Vreden Hoop, talking with vendors, talking with residents, with citizens. Last week, we were in uh, Essekebo. Last week, spoke with folks on the ground there as well. People are hurting badly financially in this country. Very badly. This week, folks, this weekend... I'm going to be in um, Bartica. If you're joining 
from Bartica. I'd love to see some of you on Saturday on the ground in Bartica. Going to let you know very soon. We're going to be having that meeting. Going we'll to be talking with some uh, AFC colleagues there on the ground, meeting with some of our leaders there in Bartica. But I'd love to meet with some of you as well. You know, we'd love to meet with some of you on the ground there in Bartica. We're going to tell you a little more, bit more about that. People are hurting badly financially. You know, almost all of the green sellers that I spoke with in uh, Vreden Hoop says they got to, in addition to selling greens, to bring in an extra income, they got to cook. So most of them selling food as well now. And these are people who traditionally just, just sell greens. Right? They got to be hunting for an additional, um, an additional income. And what is quite strange, a lot of them were our indo Guyanese brothers and sisters. And they premised what they said to us by saying, I want to be racial. That's how they started. Now, when somebody says that, you know, all your antennas up. And Gibson, you ever had an experience? I want to be racial. That's how they premise what they were about to say. Our indo Guyanese brothers and sisters, they said, but since the PPP come in, since the PPP come in, things are, I know a lot of you can say, but they can still go and vote for them. Don't let me go there yet. Hold on. Let's have some faith in our people. Since the PPP come in, you know, and there was no new vendors. We went into lots of the stores in Vreden Hoop as well. Into lots of the stores. And the owners told us the same thing. Things tough. You know, some of them showed us. You see all here? You see me boxes of goods waiting. So as quick as the shelves um, you know, are laid bare, we replenish. They said, no, we can't even afford to make the investment. They got stuck on hand. Because things are going very slow. What is money going to do? I see international lawyer Selwyn Peters, you know, has made a comment. Money flowing like a river. But where is money going? Right? Lawyer Selwyn Peters in the chat there on YouTube. He says, where the oil well there? They're telling us they took out 46, 41.6 billion from the natural resource fund. The second withdrawal for the year. And people are hurting badly financially. Big projects got their place, no doubt. You know? They want, they want the legacy project. They want 40 years from now. You say, hey, Jack, you build this road here. Jack, you build this bridge. Now, people can't eat the bridge. People cannot eat the bridge for every Guyanese. Every Guyanese. Every time you hear oil fine, you must hear that register. Ching. Money going on your bank book. Now when people hear another oil fine, people suck in the teeth. You know, throwing down the TV, flinging away the cell phone. Because people know in this country, there's nothing in it for them. Nothing in it for us. So they brought two financial papers before the National Assembly. We're supposed to be looking at them tomorrow. But is it actually overseas? You overseas, but you doing big withdrawals though. But when it comes to coming before the National Assembly for the people's business, you have the time with that. Spend, spend, spend. Spend, spend, spend. Them boys on vacation. See, Airfan in London on vacation. Jack, you fly now just now. Air, um, Ali is overseas. I mean, Ashley is overseas as well. This vacation time for them. It is vacation time for them. Spend. Spend, spend. 
For one billion, they were drawing. Yep. What else do I want to tell you? For one billion. For one point six. To be precise, them boys could spend. And you and I gotta ask a question, you know, going to the going to the ballot box, going to the polls, the local government election. If you life better than it was two, three years ago, vote for them boys. If your life is better, you got more money in your pocket, your quality of life has improved. Then you should have no trouble voting for your boys. You see, if we vote on issues in this country, we're going to be in a different place, you know. If we vote on issues, let help wreck. If we vote on issues, we're going to be in a vastly different place. Right? We're going to be in a vastly different place. If we vote on issues. Yep. Member of Parliament, Gita Chandran Edmonds, who is Shadow Minister for uh, Home, uh, Home Affairs, Shadow Minister for Home Affairs, says we still need this investigation concerning the Permanent Secretary of Home Affairs, Ministry of Home Affairs. Right. She was interrogated going through Miami Airport early April. Yep. She was questioned, she was quizzed. They crashed her phone and revoked her passport. Them boys silent. Silent night. Private matter. Oh, and she had 9,000 US. <laughs> she had 9,000 US on her. Right. Was May fleeing? Maybe to bring back May, you know. Maybe May was going somewhere to stay. Them boys had to bring back May. They took her cell phone, revoke her visa. All know some of them trembling, you know, worried. See, must be very, very worried. They gotta fly, gotta go somewhere. They don't know where they're gonna meet. Extremely worried. Will we ever know what are the circumstances? Uh, we ain't know from them. Margaret Nelson, we ain't gonna know it from them, Neon Harding. But will we ever know what were the circumstances surrounding why? May Thomas, May Toussaint Thomas was detained, questioned, you know, again, food confiscated, visa revoked. Will we ever know the real circumstances? Will we ever know? Guess when we get back to office shortly, we gotta go through the files. Get back in there shortly. Go through the files. Like the press says, PP government corrupt. You know, and they're gonna throw this fiasco under the rug, says Little Prax. Right. Edward Broom says, common events cast a shadow. Oh, you're prophesying now, Edward. You're prophesying. Common events cast a shadow. You know, so when you hear people say this is a corrupt cabal, understand what they're talking about. Corrupt cabal. Where's the transparency? Where's the good governance? It's gone out the window. Out, out, out the window. It's gone. It gone. Yep. Phone confiscated. Had 9,000 US in her possession. You know. Just under what you need to declare. 9,000 plus, they told us. 
in her possession. Well, she, she got her visa revoked. A visa revoked. Yep. Yep. And then, folks, finally, we've been, you know, trying to wrap our heads around this sad saga. You know, the murder of Sir Corbin Mars, you know, principal of St. Mary's High School, former teacher at Multi, you know, huge personality in the uh, theater. You know, huge personality, period. Well, the police is saying that they're still hunting the suspect who some reports indicate was in the vehicle with Mars and there was a, a knife fight. Police are also telling us this morning that Sir Mars sustained several stab wounds. Several stab wounds. And then from the information that we have as well suggests that, you know, this vehicle was um, reversed into Sir Mars, pinning him between a fence and the fender of the vehicle, crushing him, crushing him. And that's, I think, the huge front page of Sabak News this morning. Stabbed and crushed. You know, that's why we say the authorities got to send a very strong signal. But it's something that happens. We see it's always like a phenomenon when the PP is in power. Law and order goes out the window. You know, corruption, nepotism, you know, and all those vices, you know, they raise their ugly heads. So this is where we are. So the hunt is on for this suspect who um, uh, fled the scene on foot. And they're saying that this young, young man was the driver at the time of the vehicle. It's a lot. It's a lot we got to deal with here, folks. But we continually believe that together we can do it. Together, together, together we can do it. Right? I see Faye says it's lawlessness top to bottom. Faye says it's lawlessness top to bottom. Nicole Cole you know, says domestic violence is so damn normal. It's a new COVID. You couldn't put it better. You couldn't put it better. Right. That's why we see this is one of the other pandemics we deal with. You know, violence against women, against girls, especially. You know, violence against women and girls, especially. The carnage on our roadways and our waterways. And then crime in a league of its own. Unabated, unmitigated in a league of its own. That's where we are in crime. You know, these are all the issues we, we got to grapple with. All the issues. Right? Margaret Morris says it was a, was a willful act. Was a willful act. Shelly Douglas says this. Too much corruption in Guyana. And the PPP is to blame. That's what Shelley says. Too much corruption is them boys. Marcel Hope, Gil Ali Cook. Yep. Just some of the issues that, that are percolating, that are brewing from overnight into today. Today has its own, you know, its own challenges we got to rise to in store. It got its own challenges that we got to look at. And every day, every day, 
Yep. Every day something. Every day something. Every day something. Folks, local government elections are upon us. Local government elections are upon us. And um, on Sunday evening, you had the launch. Sunday evening, you had the launch of the George Chung local government campaign. You know, we had the launch of the campaign. Mr. Norton said them boys could lie. So they didn't care a thing about local governance. You know, among the many things they don't care about. And my mind is on that for the $1.6 billion. If they cared about the people of this country, you know, so much more could be done. So much more could be done. So much more could be done. So Sunday night was the launch of the LG campaign for Georgetown. And Mr. Aubrey Norton, leader of the People's National Congress Reform, and leader of the opposition, you know, he had a few things to see about them boys. You know, he had a few things to see, you know, that they don't believe in local government election one bit. For them as a papi show and a mama guy, don't believe one bit in local government election. Take a look, take a listen. Somebody said on the on the um, on the stump on Saturday night. The People's Progressive Party has no interest in local democracy. And the evidence is there. They were forced to hold a local government election in 1994. And after that, they held no other one. They sought to dominate and control every municipality, every NDC. So they can't come now saying they want local government and they like local government. They don't want it. But they believe that they can win. They better put pass in front. Because they cannot win in Georgetown. We will beat them in Linden. We will beat them in Bartico. We will beat them in New Amsterdam. We will beat them in Madia. So we are not afraid of them. They believe because they are a kleptocracy, a government of thieves, and they have a set of money at their disposal that they could buy out this whole country. Well, I want to say this to them. Our people are intelligent. In Linden, I was liming when a man was talking. He said, you know, it's so easy for me, 15,000. But by the time he put on the jersey and he turned it back, he took it off and he gone. And I just said, damn stupid. They believe everybody is Kashif. They're going to go and take out a vote for show the world. That is the level of idiocy they like. Our people are sensible. They are going to take the money and vote APNU. My friends, if they believed in local democracy, they would give the money that they're supposed to give to the local authorities to the local authorities. But that fool, that dumb dildo one, Believes that he could instruct everybody. He seeks to control every area. He seeks to control every overseer. The only thing he can control is his biological lung. What do you call it? I got so long, but when I saw the picture, it's a different thing. These are the people that are setting themselves up as if they can run a country they cannot they have shown they have no interest in democracy whatsoever if you leave them there will be no municipality there will be no ndc and jack they all had the temerity to say give me george strong and y'all ain't gotta do nothing we can do everything 
we give you this country for years and he can't show one successful project. Jack Dale cannot show to this country, you know, we could say, Barnum could sell Linden Sue's like I read. Dr. Jagger might be able to sell Black Bush Pool though. Every time you ask Jack Dale about his things, is corruption. He could only point us to Sue. Only Sue. Yep, yep, yep. Mr. Norton himself, leader of the opposition, leader of the PNCR. They don't care a thing about local government election. You know? <laughs> it's, not, it's not a photo up for them. What they care about is drawing out that 41.6 billion. You know, friends, family, and favorites. And that's what they care about. Precisely what they care about. We're going to see you guys back on the uh, podcast today. All things being equal. We want to thank you guys for uh, joining us this morning, guys. And as you go about today, you know, a word from the uh, Still Collins firm, Alistair Collins firm. Well, folks, if you uh, need a justice of the peace, commissioner votes to Afi David, then we have no, no problem recommending the Alistair Collins firm. You know, they'll give you the answers you need, guys. They'll give you the guidance you need. They'll give you the expert support that you need as well. They're open Monday through Saturday. The Callion Mall on Lamaha Street between the camp and Waterloo Street. Callion Mall between camp and Waterloo Street on Lamaha Street. 649-6410-6856448. 649-6410-6856448. That being said, good folks, we're going to see you guys back for the podcast. We're going to see you guys right back here on the podcast. That's going to do it for us. Good to have had each and every one of you with us this morning. We see you, folks. We see you. On front parts, we see you there and Isabella Butchers. We see Isabella said, no, all right. <laughs> Thankfully, the program is going to be right on our pages, and you can, you can, you can check in back with that. Vesta and um, Maxine, Gwyneth, Joyce, Dolly, Annette, um, Diane, and all the other folks. Guys, we're happy that you are here. Partner with us as well, folks. We can do more of these programs. Thanks for joining us this morning. See you guys on our next broadcast, folks. Look for, looking forward to seeing you guys on our podcast. If you found a new value in our program this morning, share the live. Share, share, share the broadcast. Smash that emoji as well. Smash that emoji button. All of it helps to drive up the algorithm and helps to get us um, into other places that folks can get valid and credible information from. Thanks for joining us. That's going to do it for us. Stay safe, guys. Stay safe out there. Please and thank you. Stay safe.